welcome back to our next and our final episode of season five of Raise Em Up uh, here as we get to close our time down with Growing With as we turn the corner into the final chapter, the part two about adulting uh, as last was kind of about <laughs> relational yeah. and now we have vocational mm-hmm. adulting. Yeah. And with yeah. me today is Melanie Schultz. J.N. Martin. And it's great to be with you both. And who are you? I'm Pastor Lee. Pastor Lee Hope. (laughs) Yeah, I never do get to say that on the podcast. That's kind of fun, right? Uh, But hey, I mean, I found this whole journey to be kind of interesting as with growing with. Mm -hmm. And and I definitely, I I, I honestly, I'm still sitting here going, uh, last week's episode was my favorite Mm -hmm. episode we've ever done Mm -hmm. on on Raise Them Up. I mean, mean, it was really that good of an engaging, talking about relationships, some in-depth stuff. So I'm excited today then to, to turn this corner and really do close the close the cover on mm-hmm. growing with. Uh, and we get into that word, right? So we went from relational to vocational. Yeah. Which I do, they're so, they're so thrifty with their language that they use. It's so great, <laughs> right? And so just the, just the, the patterns and yes. the following. I appreciate that. I, I want to give them a little nod for that one. What in the world are we talking about when we say vocational adulting? Mm-hmm. We have to unpack both of those words for everybody. Yeah. Well, we can go back to adulting from previous chapters. And that, yes. is, that is kind of owning your world and your impact on the world around you. It's agency. Mm. That's yeah. another word. Agency. I love yeah. that one. Becoming independent in that, mm-hmm. and making it yours. Exactly. So, and that was just the general adulting. So, again, making your own relationships yours, gaining that agency, that ownership of your own things. And now it's going into this word vocational, which it's kind of funny. Like, I tripped up on their definition. I know. I was going to say their definition is very um, interesting. And 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 I think it's interesting too. Like and and Jan, I know that 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 you come from different church backgrounds yes. too. But at least for me, I recognize it's solely because the way Lutherans specifically talk about vocation, it tripped me up. Because I think most people hear the word vocation and think occupation, job, job, job career, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what was what was their definition here in? Mm. Uh, Growing with their definition is identity in Christ embodied in a specific context, expressed in service to God's mission. So let's let's apply that. Let's throw that out there. So my identity in Christ embodied in Love a specific it. context, <laughs> expressed in service to God's mission. So um, my identity in Christ, child of God, um, expressed in a embodied in a specific context. I, in this case, I'm a a mother. Um, Good, and so, right? So right. I think that's where this one went yes. more occupational when mm. it came to vocation because it was talking about your specific job and the way you're doing. Yeah. But I know, it, like at least in our circles, when you talk about vocation, that's exactly where you go. Right. Uh, I have a I have vocation many vocations. as a mom. Mm-hmm. A I have sister, a vocation as a friend, yes. uh, you know, a teacher, uh, whatever it, you know, whatever it is at the moment, a neighbor. Exactly, a, a citizen of the United States, or whatever it is. Right. Um, so I think this, I think this does fit that definition. Absolutely. Yeah, and but I it's think, all about embodied in specific contexts. Yes. And, and how we can say, whatever the context is, you do have an identity in Christ mm-hmm. and you're called to be in service to the mission, which is love God, love others. Good, good, yeah. And that's where I think I just wanted to flesh out just a little bit more. Because yeah. again, we went so strong into occupation in this chapter that mm. I was like, and they did a great job actually at the end. I remember, um, oh, where was it? All right, we'll find it later. But like, it was one of those like, oh, there it is. There's the fullness of everything that they were saying about vocation that I wanted to be able to see. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it was page 262. There we go. See, I love taking notes. Y'all take notes. <laughs> take notes. <laughs> Write them down. Your brain won't keep up. You can't flip through all the pages. That was, that That's was, a you can actually do. nugget of information. Yes, yeah. but you can also do what you want because. <laughs> Agency. Yes. You have agency. <laughs> so reframe all work as holy. Yes. Like yes. that was yes. where I was like, yep. yes, that's what I want to get yeah. into. Mm-hmm. Well, because it was interesting too, I recognized in the, when they quoted uh, this guy in the early part of the chapter, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher his name, uh, Butchner or Beechner, uh, who Buckner? said, Buckner, Buckner, uh, who Buckner. said the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Mm-hmm. And yeah. One of my closest friends in college had a blog called Deep Hunger and Deep Gladness or something like that. So I was like, oh, that's where it came from. All yeah. these years later, it's it's dawning on me. So, so it's definitely a conversation to be had of just 
anywhere God places you, there are people to serve and there's ways to honor God and his purpose and his kingdom. And again, I loved how it was all work is holy. So you opening the door for your neighbor, you Mm -hmm. respecting your mom and your dad, you- Folding um, laundry. Yes. Folding (laughs) laundry, right? So that your spouse doesn't Mm -hmm. have to or something like that, right? That is holy work, serving your neighbor. Uh, And I always go back to, I kind of joked, like whenever I think of vocation, the first word that comes to mind is, shoemaker. <laughs> That's because like when you learn about Luther talking about vocation and mm-hmm. he's he's one of the best theological voices on the topic of vocation. Like every denomination will go back to what he says. He's saying there's no holier vocation than the other. The priest is just as holy oh, yeah. as the shoemaker, that kind of a thing. Yep. And that like every single way that you use what mm-hmm. God has given you yeah. is is a way to serve your neighbor and that's God honoring and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. I, the other one I think of is uh, the cathedral picture, how the, the the building, the construction of cathedrals takes place over hundreds of years. And so, you know, a generation that starts and lays foundation and builds up the walls is doing work that they'll never fully see completed. But without their work, you know, it's, it's and they take a special moment to say, as, you know, cathedrals are being taken down or, or pieces are being restored, they'll uncover stuff in the walls that's there, that's been there by the, you know, somebody 150 years back who's put their stamp on it. That's just a blessing to the Lord. It might be hidden Mm -hmm. behind all this other stuff, but you know, it's still, it's holy. It's a gift to the Lord. And so like, you know, if you, if you consider yourself a cathedral builder, you're not going to um, worry about the fact that, you know, your bricks are going to get hidden eventually right. or covered up mm. because you see that the bigger picture is the cathedral mm-hmm. and you're not the only one building. Um, and so it, it just kind of gives you a different view of like, I got, I work on a cathedral. That mm-hmm. really is my, I'm building the kingdom of God. I wash dishes, yep, but that's how I am yes. serving and God's I've, people. I appreciate yep. how that metaphor can extend into so many oh, yeah. vocations and occupations, mm-hmm. right? So again, even the washing of the laundry so that your kid can go and play the sport so that they can go and eventually, right, celebrate the gifts that God has for them in that way or the different ways that they use their talents or like the teacher, like teachers certainly know what it means to lay bricks that are never gonna see the final product, right? Uh, And then I think of like, even as you're talking about cathedrals, I'm like, recently for some reason, I'm all like infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. Which is always a word I never understood as a kid, but it's like highways. And and maybe it's because there's so much construction all the time around here. (laughs) Orange phone guy. But but it's like too, like just, I I always like even sitting in a building, Mm -hmm. right? So again, not a cathedral necessarily, but I'm always so impressed, especially with an older building at how many people it took to get to one place. Even this book, right? Or this coffee mug, right? All of the different people that came to make this coffee mug, right? And yep. did you say orange cone guy? I did. I said yes. orange cone explain guy. Explain that. Jan's like, what? Yeah, no, no, no. explain that. That was Good. that video y'all watched. It, it, at, that, at, the, at the youth gathering. National youth gathering. Mm-hmm. I remember you talking well, about A it. year ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's been more than a year. Yes, um, yeah. There's, there was a whole skit. Oh, I skit. love that skit so much. It makes my heart happy. I'll tell you why later. Yes. But um, the, so the skit is all about this, this grocery store worker who's pumped about bread. And it's just like- and the specific this, loaf like, of bread. Take a look at this loaf of bread. Do you have any idea how amazing this loaf of bread is? And the other grocery store workers are like, no, I'm, I'm off in 15 <laughs> minutes. Like, can we wrap this up? <laughs> but he sits there and he's, 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 the, the grocery store workers tell him all about, look, like think about the label and the packaging and the designer who made the label. And then think about the guy who drove the trucks. And, and then think about the orange cone guy who sets up the orange cones in the construction sites and, and sets up the detours so that people can stay safe and get where they need to go to get, the, you know, get this delivered. And then think back to the YouTube make, uh, baker who made a video that showed it inspired this person to make the recipe for the bread. And then think about the math teacher that taught the YouTube baker <laughs> how to make the conversions so they could figure out the measurements to make the recipe for da, 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 da. The farmer, just, the grandma, yeah, uh, everybody. Every Everybody yeah. that's involved, right. the person who invented the little plastic thing to twist the yes, the bags, yeah, you know, yeah. like when we pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread, God is answering that prayer through hundreds and thousands of different vocations and jobs of people. Like, I still vividly remember amazing. sitting in the stands of Minute Maid Park watching this play out. And I'm with our youth group. Granted, it's late in the day after an an, an experience with thousands and thousands of kids from across the country. And I'm sitting next to specifically a kid that's about to be a senior in high school. 
and like the, the 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 vibe, if you will, of the group was like, what in the world what is, is happening going right on? now? Yeah, they're talking about and, all these different people, and, and they're kind of talking to each other like that. And I like turned to the kid and I said, "This is one of the most brilliant skits <laughs> I've ever seen," and everyone's completely missing the point. And it but was like, "What do you mean?" Yeah, the the redeeming factor <laughs> was when Orange Cone guy came on the stage. And he oh. was, you know, he wasn't some, you know, just some poor Joe just sitting down and comes. He was having fun with it. And it Absolutely. was like, it was like this picture of when you know your work matters, yeah. it it creates a different way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, But the it, thing about Orange Cone Guy yeah, was, was like, silly, yeah. he was loved, y'all. So Everybody the entire was, the stadium like, when he stepped onto the stage was cheering. Yes. Like, or just because like of the vibe standing, he put off? Standing or? ovation by the like, end of it. Like he was so into it. It's yeah. like, have you ever seen the videos of the um, traffic control guys that dance? Oh, yes. You yeah. know, yeah, or, yeah, or, exactly. or uh -huh. whatever, where they yeah. just, they they do what they are love. It's this, it's this, the place where deep gladness and deep hunger meet, you know, where there's a need and somebody is just having a ball doing it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's that's one of the cool things that I think about. Okay, so this is a little off topic. I'm so sorry. When I think about heaven, I used to be like, I don't really want to go to heaven. That sounds so boring. And that's terrible to say, but I was like, <laughs> are we just going to sit there and sing? Like, I like singing a whole lot more than most people, but... And you do it a lot better than most of us. <laughs> but if that's it, like, I don't know. But when, I, when a professor in college started talking about how God created us for fulfilling, meaningful work, work that is productive and brings us that great joy and gladness, work that's unique and can be creative and all these different things, and that work is going to be part of heaven, I was like, game changer. Because it wasn't like work, drudgery, labor. Right, it was not the like, hard stuff. Yeah, It was exactly. like, you know, when you nail a project and you're like, yes, this is good. Or when you are, you know, when you are singing and you're having that moment and you're singing with all the people of God and you're like, this is, this is so fulfilling. This is so, this is meeting all of my deep, unique loves and interests. And I'm working my tail off to make it good. And it's coming together. Like all of those pieces. I don't know, you ever, you ever, go to, when I think about work camps, I think about, well, and I worked, I worked construction for a while with my dad. And at, sometimes at the end of that long day, you're sweating, you're exhausted, but it was like a great day. Fulfilling. You did something. You yeah, accomplished something. Productive. Yeah. I crossed that thing off my list or I see the work coming to fruition. That's godly. Like that's what we're designed for. So when we think about career, you know, that we have an opportunity to reframe the way the world sees yeah. careers and but, the in-between stuff too, by pointing the day-to-day -to -day to the stuff. Deeper, by pointing to the deeper vocation, right? right? And so that's like, I, I hope twofold for our listeners is this is a pretty good introduction, right? Yeah. One, uh, there is a stadium of God's creation cheering for you in every little task that you think means nothing and as it supports your neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. Whoever it is that's listening, whatever that looks like, maybe you're on the car ride right now, going to pick up a kid. Like again, yep. you have a stadium of God's creation cheering you on right now. And two, it's our hope that we can get our kids as we raise them up to see the same thing. Right. Yep. Every little task that goes in service of God or your neighbor is one that is getting cheered on because it's glorifying God in the fullest, right? Yep. And so this chapter is really about try, how do we do that for our learners, for our explorers and for our focusers? How do we get them to see these things? Uh, and what was the advice? Well, I'll say this, right? Because we use this vocation. We use a lot of different words today. Mm -hmm. Under that umbrella of vocational uh, adulting, you have two spheres that they want us to consider. And I thought that was really helpful for the framework yeah. of the chapter. Uh, service and career. Right. So service and career. Talk to me more about that. So career, obviously, the occupation, your date, you know, your nine to five, so to speak. Um and, and then for service, it's the things you do kind of above and beyond. So things you do for the community is really where they spend a lot of time they, focusing. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't really talk about it in the home as much. <clears throat> so I, I kind of- They yeah, talk they a little about service as about. a home. Yeah, we would yeah. definitely bring it. Because again, vocation for us, we go mother, father, brother, sister. Yeah, right? every role that you spouse, have. Spouse, right? But All I, these yeah. things, yeah. Probably, yeah. Things, yeah. Probably uh, in, 
I mean, in order to fit it in a chapter, right? Yes. They couldn't. <laughs> no, sure, sure, sure. Talk about all of our vocations. Yes. So they did talk about like your your service. What are you doing to serve in your community in your church? Yes. Well, outside most, of kind of your house, yes, was right. more of their service, sure, and then so your it's career. Yes. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. career was. What is your job? Because mm-hmm. I, you, you know, I know you kind of said like above and beyond, but I, I kind of felt like it was also before and in between, right? Mm. Especially as you consider a learner, a focuser, and a and an explorer. Yeah, yes. It's like you're gonna you're gonna serve before you even know what career is or looks like, and yes. in that service, you're going to learn more about yourself and the things more about that you what enjoy, matters to the you, things that yeah. that might lead you to the sphere of yes. career, right? Yeah. And I, I I vividly remember then Kara speaking with a 28 year old. Uh, who was like hurt, right? That it was she took her until she was twenty eight to figure out what she wanted to do. Again, this is, I loved it because it highlighted that focuser, right? Yeah, you, it takes that whole time to figure out who you are. And then Kara said, like gladly, oh, I study this. I have a statistic: twenty eight is the new eighteen, right? Mm-hmm. And the yeah. girl broke down even more because it was uh, like pretty much a decade of. Struggling, Thought, fighting. Yeah, thinking I'm falling behind. Thinking yes. I'm, no one else I'm, is like me. Because yeah. yeah. remind us, this was all the way back in chapter one. So this was mm-hmm. this was seven episodes ago. What do I mean by 28 is the new 18? So that the milestones of adulthood that people used to reach around 18, we're now seeing youth and young adults reach at eight at 28. Yeah. So some of that career focus or. Um, you know, whether it be through higher education or relationships being pushed off or um, career settling and choices, a, a lot of that is just happening later. It's being delayed. Yeah, so I'm old, right? I'm <laughs> almost 50. Oh, my children love to keep Stop reminding it. me that. Stop. For real. Yeah, I will be 50. Um, so almost 50. But when I was 18 and graduating from high school, that was, hey, girlfriend, get a job. Yep. Go yep. to school, but you're you know you're independent, and that was you the time for arrived. me to kind of start making, taking my agency and making right, all of right. my decisions, and and I did feel kind of prepared. Yeah. Maybe not. I mean, I made lots of mistakes along the way, but to do that now, you know, having an 18 year old, I can't even imagine expecting her to leave my house. Right. I mean, she prepared is leaving my way, house yeah. to go off to college or is at college, but. I'm still very much supporting her along the way yeah. as a guide, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, but I'm in that role, not so much the, now I'm going to sit in the back seat and I don't have to do anything. Right, yeah. right. And I think that's what this chapter really gets into this, right? Of just helping your learner, your explorer, and your focuser navigate what it means to arrive at yeah. vocational adulting, to grow in their own agency of service and careers and picking it and to start practicing things. Because I did appreciate really early on in the chapter how it talked about how, like I think about your Peyton, right? Like she's had tremendous influence in her circles, right? Yes. She's been able to mm. practice what that means yes. mm-hmm. to lead, to innovate, to bring some energy into a situation. Like you experience that on the kids' ministry side all the time with these learner focusers mm-hmm. and what am I missing? Explorers, Explorers, right? Like giving their energy and bringing a new Mm -hmm. thing. And it's like, this is awesome. And and, and I would imagine, right? I've never sat in your chair of running something like VBS, but it must be so thrilling to watch the kids just own something and lead, right? In Mm -hmm. such a way. And so they, they don't have careers, but they're in their service they're already making tremendous impacts in their communities in different ways. And and that's just in our little bubble of what we call church. So it's like, it's just, I thought that was so cool too of they're learning this stuff. And as you kind of mentioned with pain, I can't see the fullness of it, but we can see the little glimpses along the way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and helping guide them along the way, right? Because when I was growing up, no one ever talked to me about what skills I had mm. that would maybe make a good yeah. career, right? Yeah. Or would, would be helpful in serving in certain areas. So kind of starting to notice those things about your children and not saying, oh, you will be, mm. but saying, hey, you know what? I noticed that you're good at this. I could Maybe, see this. Yeah. Would, you, would you like to serve with me doing this mm-hmm. to use that? So just kind of starting to notice in our explore, no, what are our first ones? Our learners. Learners, yeah. Yeah. They're all blending together on me right now, but starting to notice (laughs) in our learners and maybe even before they become learners, Uh right? Uh What are their giftings? What are the things that God has given them and gifted them with and start nurturing those and 
providing opportunities for them to use those gifts yeah. in service yeah. mm-hmm. and giving them those opportunities. I loved that attitude that was shared throughout this chapter mm-hmm. was was the need to see and affirm mm-hmm. what your, you know, the special gifts and, you know, how God has wired the young people in your world. Because a lot of times we we start, and this is me talking to myself, get, getting ruled by fear of, oh no, have I prepared them enough? What if they don't get a job right away? What if they decide they have to start their <laughs> career over? What if, you know, da, 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 da. And so I wanna make sure that they're settled and I wanna make sure that they've got what they need and I wanna make sure they're making the right decision that's gonna last their life. And in doing that, I'm adding pressure mm-hmm. that is not going to ultimately allow them to experience what they need to experience to figure out where they fit. Yeah. And we're in a different time than we were 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, where, you know, a person who goes into a career and stays there for 30 years, that's not typical yes. and that won't yeah. be the norm. And that's okay. And, and that's where it creeps into the, They talked about the experimenting, right? Yeah. Yes, uh, at the very end, that was yes. my favorite word. I, yeah. I loved that because it was like, again, explorers too close, right? But experimenters, like that's really is what this next generation mm-hmm. is all about is yep. finding out what works. And it's kind of our role of anybody that walks alongside of uh, these this next generation, parents, mentors, et cetera, is to really, again, a phrase that we've used probably every episode for a long time now, but be curious. Be curious. Not that judgmental. was in here. Yep. Yeah. Not, not, not judgmental, quite that, but, but it was, yeah, I gotta find it. But to have the curiosity to ask questions, mm-hmm. to be that kind of guide and the, to remember this, I'm not fixing things. This is not nope. my life. This is theirs. They have yeah. different challenges than I walked through. And to, to, to just kind of have that. Because I love how the chapter moves from the same, it's similar patterns as a previous chapters of here's some facts about this time. Mm-hmm. Here's some ideas. And the mm-hmm. ideas is where the meat is. Yeah. So I want to, I would definitely want to venture into there, but were there any big kind of insights you gathered previous to the ideas? I just really liked the heavy emphasis on service because I think a lot of times we view that as like a bonus Mm -hmm. or something that we will put off when we have more time and that just is never gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I liked I liked keying in on it as something that needs that that is such a a blessing to us and to the community and and to your faith walk and all these things to to you know to have it integrated as a norm. And so you can model that, you can start that if it's not a thing already in your home. Yeah. Um, and then that actually is gonna bless your kids because it's gonna give them the opportunities for that experimenting, for plugging in and seeing, you know, and the the conversations around service and the um debriefing and prepping and all of that that you can put into place, you know, when you go out and serve as a family or, or you know, if you're, if somebody's going on a mission trip or whatever it might be, um, you're, you're giving them opportunities to imagine and to see how might God want to plug in my skills and what right. are the needs around me that and he's And how I've been to able meet. to meet them too. Yeah. Cause like mo- the biggest, the m- most powerful quote from me from that section about insights was the mom that looked at her kids and helped out a family that needed something that they found out just walking in a store yep. and found out this was a thing, a need. And uh, she said to her kids, if God is meeting our needs, how can we meet the needs of others? Yeah. Right? I yeah. thought that was a really powerful yeah. perspective kind of quote. So I'd love to even just deep dive on some of these mm-hmm. I service ideas that come at the end of the chapter. So 255, as we think about like uh, things like serving together, if your child's at home, Mm -hmm. mission trips, all this stuff. What stood out to you here? So for our listener can take away a few nuggets about the service ideas from this chapter. I think talking about it with your children, right? Not just sending them off on a one day or having a one day, we're gonna go as a family and do this today. Mm. And then it's done. Mm -hmm. But that's not the end of it. And that's not really the beginning of it. Exactly, that's what I love. Let's talk about before we go, you know, and we've talked about this before yes. in, in another podcast with another book. Um, but before you go, hey, you know what? We're going to um, this part of town. What do we know about this part of town? Let's learn a little bit about that mm-hmm. community before yeah. we go into it. Let's start praying before mm-hmm. we head over there. And yeah. And then you're working in the community, but then after, what did you learn? What What did you enjoy doing? Exactly. What can we take away from that? And or if you're going on a specific trip, yeah, yeah. Right. What's next? if you're going on a specific trip, like, yes. like I think a Kenya or Alaska or yeah. junior high mission trip or whatever, like, or a service event, like it could just be a Saturday. Like what kind of people do you think we're going to run into? Mm-hmm. Why do you think they got there in the first place? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. And again, from a mm-hmm. from a uh, 
charitable perspective, oh, yeah. Yeah. right? That's really key when it comes to service. But I'm like just thinking of like our junior high mission trip and all the places we serve. Like we could equip parents tremendously by just saying, hey, these are the places. This is a great conversation to have. Oh, you're going to be serving at the Houston Food Bank. Let's look into all the things that they do, right? And especially as you get that learner, that explorer, like they can do their own research. Like, hey, you're going on that trip. Give me a PowerPoint presentation about Houston Food Bank, right? <laughs> Your PowerPoint presentation. I love it. I love it. But you know, I loved that appreciation, just the conversation. I also loved uh, family supporting, uh, the, the, the mm. ongoing, finding a good, reputable, Charity yes. to support a family yeah. or something like that, and I think of Passion International. Yeah. Exactly. Or, yeah, yeah. Like and that, I'm yeah. I'm thinking of too, like, like for us. And again, I'm going to the more hands on for our community mm-hmm. here, but I'm certain it's true for other listeners too that in their own communities, there's really specific things but like Kenyan Schools of Hope. Like, I'm sure there's a way to really be able to tell the story of uh, the school for those girls that that yeah. these these two partners have come together to build over there for them. Yeah. Uh, Because I love every time we get the updates and we're hearing about how many were baptized, how many are getting confirmed. I love the dual relationship of our school. But again, having those conversations happening around our kitchen tables and our car rides. Yeah. And then the creativity that can go into that, um, you know, whether it's, hey, we, we want to support this, you know, as a family. How can you mm. help us to do that? So we want to sponsor a child from Compassion. Um, that's going to cost this much over the course of a year to do that as a family. How much do you think you can contribute? Okay, cool. How are you? How are you going to work to make that happen? Yeah. Or you know, and and oh, you, you don't have a job. That's okay. You know, could we put together a lemonade stand, or could you you know create artwork that we can sell, or I could you? That was right, so we cool. talked about giving. Yeah. It, it yeah. talked yeah. about the keychain, right? Giving mm-hmm. yeah. giving the the keychain explorers the and the, keys. yeah, giving yeah. them those figurative keys, letting them take ownership in driving yes. Yes. that yeah. project or that service or whatever it is. Having a that, little bit of mm-hmm. ownership, like I just appreciated yep. how. They said in there, it was like, yeah, my kid said, I'm going to give 200 bucks to this. And it wasn't, I'm going to ask dad how I can yeah. get $200 of <laughs> dad's money. Dad, I need money. to borrow $200. Right. It was, I'm going to find out, like you mentioned, lemonade, state, lemonade stands. I always go to lawn mowing, like yeah. something like that. Car wash, whatever. Yeah. Right. Of, of I'm going to find a way to do this, you know, and get this. I'm going to take the agency, the ownership to be able to make this happen. And, and there that- are so many cool things out there that you can help oh, yeah. support. You yeah. know, whether whether it's like business, um, small business starter loans or, mm-hmm. you know, like the chickens or the llamas, you know, you set up, you set mm-hmm. up somebody across the world. But then there's so many things here too, where you're, you you know, you're packing backpacks or yes, helping at the food no pantry good. or, right. So it's not like, it doesn't have to be something Abroad crazy. Something, it doesn't have yeah. to be a $3,000 mission trip that you attend. Um, but it, it, it can get big, yeah, you know, and it, it, it but it can also just be this, uh, uh, the, I, what I, one piece about service that I appreciated in this chapter was, um, Making sure that it's consistent, not just a one-time thing. Yes, and, and like, it's not that an event. was more important. Not an event. Yeah, not yeah. an event, but an ongoing a partnership, journey, a journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought that was a huge piece because it's one thing to say I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna serve for a week. That's good and that's great. Don't want to take away anything from that. But statistically speaking, they said that. You know, if you go on a mission trip, that doesn't necessarily change your mm-hmm. um, uh, your opinions on material goods or your behaviors. Or your behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it may not really have a lasting impact like you might think. But, in, you know, if you start a partnership, if you start a, a habit, that's going to have a longer impact, not only on yourself, but... Um, in the ministries where you're serving, in the places where people have need. Yeah, and that's where those continuing conversations, right? Once Mm -hmm. your child gets back or once your family has completed that. Yep. To keep talking about it and then finding how can we use. Exactly. And I appreciated how they pointed out, like millennials particularly, which that's what I am, (laughs) like what they care for. Because when you mentioned backpacks, that's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm just looking at the ways in which, and and it really is dawning on me, Like, like just this past week, right? Just to paint the perspective a little bit. Like had an experience where I I just recognized how even though we live in Texas and we're very Christian friendly in a lot of ways, the actual movement of faith isn't as big as you would think it is, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and there was a way that was humbling, right? Because what what, what it did for me was open my eyes to say, y'all know really like in our own backyard, we have so many people that don't know the good news Uh of Jesus. Like that's our reality. Now with that, I saw a Facebook post from a friend back in Birmingham and it was, Help me understand, and that's my phrasing. They said it a little differently. 
help me understand why we have so many churches in Birmingham and still have such great need in our community. Mm. What a challenge, right? What a great challenge. And again, going circling back to the millennial piece, when I read millennials care most about education, poverty, and the environment, I said, yeah, we do. Mm. Like, and I think about these kids and like, because growing up, like anytime I was learning about politics, like it was very much like, what did, they both say the same thing about education. And then, and now that's a mm. little different, right? And I won't get into any of that. But it's it's because we we value yeah. people being able to learn and know things. We we Our hearts go out when we find out a kid can't read or an adult can't read because they never had that available to them. Mm. Uh, poverty, our hearts go out with organizations like a Sleep in Heavenly Peace because mm. what do you mean kids don't have beds? Like, you know, it's something we can't wrap our mind around in our own community, right? Yep. Yep. Not, not, not across the border. Across the not, world, yep. Yeah, not in some other area of the country that we know is super impoverished. No, in our own community, kids don't have beds. Uh, and the same thing is true. Like even just taking care of what God has given to us in, in his creation too, like that matters to our kids. And so trying to, to, to have the conversation of what matters to you mm. How do you feel like we can best serve, right? Not how mom, and, and mom and dad, yeah, I would love for y'all to figure out or mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, mm-hmm. whoever's raising these kids up, what's passionate for you and you live that out. That was the other yes, thing I love too yeah. is you, model. <clears throat> you have to model it, especially when it comes to the ideas for uh, your kid that's away, right? Mm-hmm. So you have a kid mm-hmm. at college, you can't serve, you can't have these conversations like you did. Are you able to forward on an email of a story that is about an issue that matters to you about poverty or about something in this world? Yeah. Like I loved all those different pieces. And there was another tip in there that I thought was important, but you don't really think about it. And that was, do you talk to your kid about tithing? Do you talk to mm-hmm. your kid about the giving that you do? Because, you know, they said, well, I used to see my dad put yep. the envelope <laughs> in, you know, in, in the plate when it got passed. Well, that, and there's still moments like that. You know, I, I love to give my kids the the money so that they can put it in the plate, you know, and, and, and that's, that's yeah. a cool thing. But do they know your giving habits mm-hmm. and are you modeling what God is asking you to model, which is trust in him and giving back to the church, the gifts that God has given to you? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so do your kids know that, you know, you, maybe you're giving online and they just don't see it. Oh, sure. Do they know, yeah. you know, and, and maybe, you know, when you, when you teach them how to make a budget, because frankly, everybody needs to know how to do that. Um, you know, when you teach them how to make a budget, do you talk about giving? You're giving. Well, mm-hmm. cause it's like, it's definitely a topic for us. Like this fall, we're experiencing financial freedom campaign at Trinity yeah. Clients. So any of our listeners that are, that are familiar with that experience, like, and it was just kind of this, have we ever told people about tithing? Yeah, like, do, do we, we know? just expect it? And I think our parents are like parents of kids. It's the same thing. Yeah. Like have that intentional conversation. And I, I tell people all the time for me, like, and I, I appreciate like Jan saying the most impactful illustration that a pastor ever gave to her and Butch, like that sticks out with me of passing a, your wallet to the person next to you and saying, all right, now, how do you feel about giving? Right? <laughs> when you've been given someone else's resources, how do you feel about giving now yeah, from ooh, that, yeah, right? Because ultimately yeah. that's what's true for our lives. Well, for me, it was just, we, I, I learned going up in the church, like how important giving was as a kid, like we had the little banks, you know, mm-hmm. this much for spending, yep. this much for saving, <laughs> we did too, this much when for my tithing. Girls were younger, yep. <laughs> yeah, I did all that, yeah, uh-huh. but it wasn't until someone said that paycheck you're getting, as soon as you get it, and, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying my own experience. Mm-hmm. They said, you see that number gross? Figure out what 10% of that is and give it to your local church. That's what tithing is. That's God's invitation. He is providing this job for mm-hmm. you. He's doing these things. Mm-hmm. Just write the check. And for me being like, I kind of say that old show Rugrats at Chucky Finster. Like, I just need to know the rules. <laughs> I just need to know what's expected, like how to go. Yeah. And for people that are in a challenging situation, like I'm always saying like, just try a little bit, like yep. build toward yep. that, like, yeah. but start taking a baby step of doing some of it. Cause it's been really cool. And ask anybody that's a tither, like mm-hmm. how they got there. And it's really cool experiences, but your kids need to hear these stories. Yeah. Your kids need to hear your own story. Your kid needs to know what you do with what God has given to you. How are you stewarding his stuff too. Yeah. Modeling. Yes. yes. Big theme for all the seasons. So Modeling far. and talking, right? Yeah. Mo- yeah. Conversations. That was the thing that yep. stood out to me here was you actually have to say it. You yeah. can't just do it. Because there's a lot of, I think, Christianity perspectives. Does that make sense? Perspective of a Christian mm-hmm. is if I just do it, right? If I just yeah. am kind, if I'm just serving, if I'm just doing these things, but especially when it comes to raising up your kids, that's yes. what I'll say. Yeah, they get you, they get to have the behind the curtain. They need to. That's, yes. that's part of parenting is, is yeah. inviting them behind the curtain so that they exactly. are, are learning in a different way, right? This yeah. isn't, you're not, you know, you, you don't need to tell your next door neighbor why you are tithing and encourage them to do it necessarily, right? Yep. 
Um, but you're training up your child. Yeah. So that's to be a man or a woman just like you. And so in the same way that like because again, I want a parent, I want you to, or whoever's raising up a kid, I want you to think about this. Like, if you never say it, how, how will they, they know? know? So it, it that makes me my my um youngest is learning to drive, right? And so she's driving, and my husband is a way better driving instructor than I am. First of all, I stress out and scream way too much. <laughs> um, but he is constantly, I, I've sat in the back seat a couple times, constantly talking as they're driving, hey, when yesterday it was when you pull over into this middle lane to turn, make sure your wheels are straight. And I was like, what? And he was like, well, if you get hit and Which your wheels are straight— teacher. Then like, you're going to go. If my wheels are turned, then I'm going to get pushed into oncoming traffic, and that's a bigger issue. So talking about the little things, like he is going over all these details and driving that I'm like, really? I'm learning as I'm sitting here. But then I translate that to yeah. what we're talking about now. Yeah. Things that we do all the time, like driving, like giving, yeah. like helping our neighbor, we just do without thinking. Our children may see us. I mean, my child has been in the car with me every time we mm-hmm. go somewhere, but she doesn't know the why. Why mm. do you turn your blinker on yep. now? Why do you stop now? Why do you and keep your will those- straight in the turning lane, which was new to me? Yeah. But I mean, it's those little things. And if we're not talking to our children as they're learning to have a vocation, exactly. to use their vocations yeah. and, the and yeah. teaching them. It's just kind of like driving a car. I'm not going to give my kid the keys and say goodbye. Some of us are, gonna... are blessed with a, a child who will ask the questions. <laughs> but not all of us. <laughs> uh, but not yes. all of us. So uh, part of me is like, oh, I owe a lot of the conversations that I have to my son because he just asks the questions. I mean, why is that person standing on the corner, you know? And and what does that sign say? And, oh, do they not have a house to live in? You know, Mm. and so like I get to have lots of conversations because he asks a lot of questions. Um, But it blesses everybody in the car. Yeah. It does. And there's some things they don't know to ask. Yeah, Yeah, And so so then, so I've found myself because he's gotten in the habit of asking that now when I see things, I point them out too. And I'm like, hey, do you see, you know, Oh man, I see a fire truck over there. What do you think they're doing? You know, oh, they're probably helping somebody. Yeah, okay. What could we do to help? Let's pray. You know, whatever. And yeah. it, my kids are little, so um, you know, so there's some different opportunities there and we're in the car a lot together. But yeah, it I was so thankful for his questions. Um, because again, it just opens mm-hmm. the door to have the conversation and it made me more aware that, oh my goodness, it's true. Kids are learning all the time. Mm-hmm. And again, if, you, if you're not pointing it out, they're gonna either draw their own conclusions mm-hmm. or ask somebody else. So, you know, you, you have opportunities to communicate, do it, do it, do it. And this carries over to the conversation. We've spent so much time in service, but there's certainly a passion mm-hmm. there. But it, it carries over into some of the things we've mentioned about careers too, yeah. mm-hmm. right? So the keys, give them the keys. They're the one driving the experience. You're not the one that's gonna ultimately have the job job that they're going to get. So let them, let them drive the car, you know, let them learn along the way, teach them, resource them, uh, guide them, right? In the ways that you can, Uh, but ultimately doing that. And again, talking about that all work is holy and that this journey toward a career is different than it was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Not as simple, not as straightforward. And Jan, you pointed out that word, they're experimenting. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't feel, I loved the stat. They don't value money in their jobs more, more than they than, do enjoying it, yeah. right? So they're going to enjoy their job. And if they don't enjoy their job, there's this agency that's built in this generation that's going to say, I'm going to switch it up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit in a job that drains me. I'm not going to do all this. I'm not going to put up with it, honestly, is yeah. kind of the, the attitude I get from these these kids. But it's like, that's a beautiful piece of this raising them up in the yeah. careers, into the, yeah. the vocations that God's going to call them into too. Anything else stand out to you on the the vocational side, because again, we spent such a great time on the service piece that is so key though, because it helps them to, again, learn more about themselves, explore things and how they can use the gifts that God's given them and eventually that choosing of a career I think again, the talking with them, right? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about your own career, making sure that you're pointing out ways that your career is holy, right? I mean, so when I look at me, I'm like, okay, I work in kids ministry. That's easy. Before that, I was teaching. So for my children to look at me and say, But what they do notice is that I love to come to work. Sure, Why do you love to go to work? Well, because I am able to do this. Well, my husband works in a completely different kind Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. vocation. His Mm -hmm, career mm -hmm. is, he's sitting in a building by himself looking at all these wires and things, but God has given him the gifts to be able to do those things. And then he talks about conversations he has with coworkers, or he talks about 
you know, problems that he's able to solve. And, and so making sure that you're talking about your own career yes. in a way that lets your children know that, you know what, all careers are important exactly. and all careers are in service to God. Right. That it's not just mom who works at the church, mm -hmm. but dad who's working, you know, for a phone company in a building. Yep. And, he's also serving and, and working have, for. And you have every single person has unique gifts that they're bringing in. I was mm -hmm. about to say you're not a cog in a machine, but I was kind of like, no, actually you kind of are, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're an individual piece you're, you're, you're that helps unique. the rest yep. of it move, no matter how mm -hmm. big or how small. Like the orange cone guy. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Oh, good, good. I like that. <laughs> Pulling it all the way around. Well, hey, like as we get into then, this is the final episode. Final episode. They, they had a great little kind of conclusion to the whole growing with experience that I really did feel like encapsulated uh, like encouragement as you kind of step forward. And it, I, I appreciate it. It called it growing with symptoms. So it was kind of saying like, <laughs> if you're actually picking up the stuff they are putting down and growing with, <laughs> Here's then, some things. Then you, you should might notice see these things. These yeah. things. And, and number one was, I, I summarized it as self-awareness. I don't remember what language they used, but you're probably finding yourself more self-aware of reacting or doing other things. Urgency to address your own growth areas Good. as much as your kids. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you're yeah. seeing, oh, this is, I'm projecting right now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm putting I, my oh, needs yeah. and my wants. I'm being stretched, them. you know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's also the second one is you're asking questions. I love yes. that. I was a yes. really big fan of that. And the third one was this this idea of balancing today and tomorrow. You're able to see yourself mm. in the moment rather than just looking to the yeah. future. But at the same time, as you're in the moment, you're building toward the future. And I appreciated how that overlapped so much with the end of Habits of the Household. Mm -hmm. That same thing. I'm seeing your kid as that five-year-old, but also that 25 year old at the exact same time like that's what yeah. we're building toward that's what we're growing toward eventually a 55 year old all these things yes. of just holding it all together to be able to meet the needs of today while also honoring what's going to come next absolutely and then they kind of end it with a threefold advice okay so now that you've gone through this growing young experience maybe you picked up the book yourself i hope you did uh or maybe it is that you just listened along with us what is the advice as you kind of close this growing with experience and it says Review. <laughs> I love that. Like, because that's a g great, they're yeah. such good educators. Yeah. Like, go back through if you had the book, um, what stood out to you? Or if you go back through and you're just scrolling through the list of the topics that we talked about, what stands out to you? What was important to you? What are you going to take with you into it? Uh, number two is actually connect uh, mm -hmm. the dots, right? So, so bring some things together. Um, and then three was kind of celebrate, which I always appreciate too of, of, yay, we get to have this conversation about what it means. And this was kind of cool guys in that a lot of our conversations have been geared toward littler. Mm -hmm. And this was really our first time being able to explore the, the fullness of 13 to 29, right? Yeah. The fullness yeah. of the young adult experience. And it was kind of, Jane, I confess, it was really fun to watch you going through this experience because <laughs> it's you been have- the perfect book for me right now. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's that's fantastic. why, how timeliness, right? Because again, yes. if we would have done this last year, Oh, this is coming for me. This is yes. coming for me. But you no, know, it was, I'm in this yeah. like yeah. right now. And that was to me a joy to be able to watch and mm -hmm. to, to listen and to see God working in the work that these guys have done through mm -hmm. all of their research and things like that. As we kind of wrap that up then, and we look at it, oh, I, how did I miss the best part, y'all? Uh, the best part of the, the conclusion was page 278. Uh, it was really 270. Seven into two seventy eight. It says the final thing. It was it was a section called hope. It said whether you're pondering your parenting wins, planning out your next steps, or gauging your growing with symptoms, we are flipping a lot of pages. <laughs> we are convinced that your best parenting is not motivated by fear or shame, mm. but springs from hope. We believe God gave you your kids. We believe you love your kids. We believe you want to be the best parents you can be. We want that for our parenting too. Uh, I said, may an inspiration sparked from the pages of this book spill over into our conversations and our families with hope, possibility, and growth. Thought that was awesome. Mm, just what you need. Yeah. Parenting from a place of hope rather than yeah. a place of fear or shame or, or bogging myself down. Because one of the early on compliments I got about this podcast was how we're real about our own mistakes, how we're not perfect. We don't do it well. There is no such thing as perfect parenting. No it way. doesn't yeah. exist. Mm -mm. Um, and, and I would say just perfect parenting is vulnerability, honesty, walking alongside of your kid, recognizing you don't understand everything that's going on and asking questions, being curious 
and letting sitting, yourself be parented by Jesus. Exactly, yeah. yourself, exactly. And realizing you're learning along with them. Parenting oh, yeah. is hard. I exactly. mean, that you're always in the first moment, right? Like <laughs> yeah. you're never an expert parent, even if you've got 27 kids. No, because as soon as you think because you've got it figured out. You've got a new kid, <laughs> and this is the first time you're parenting them in that mm-hmm. stage of life. Like it's always going to be unique. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, as we as we always have, right? We invite you guys as listeners to continue the conversations. And I really do mean this uh, with with humility. Like if those are just conversations you have with your spouse or just have conversations you have with your friends, that glorifies every bit of effort we've ever put into this mm-hmm, podcast. And mm-hmm. we thank you for that. Um, if you do want to share an episode that meant something to you, that means something to us too, because that means the conversation is continuing. Uh, and of course, we're always here. And we do believe that wherever it is that God has you, he has people in your life that want to continue this conversation with you too. Whether that's the people that raised you or the community yeah. that you were raised in or the community you find yourself in and leaders that are also dedicated to young people. We know we can say for sure from our perspective, that's us, that's our hearts. And we believe that's that's true across the board for people that work with young people. So by all means, continue this conversation. Uh, again, if you, if you loved it, right? Like, subscribe, all that good stuff that all them <laughs> kids talk about these days. Um, but, but again, if you want to continue the conversation, ask any questions, you can find us uh, at uh, Raise Them Up Podcast on Facebook and Engage certainly there. Or I'm sure you can find a lot of other ways to uh, explore and find us on any platform you're listening to us. Until next time, uh, we'll see you. God be with you and give you that hope that leads your parenting.